What does that even mean, Bowers Game Cornar? Oh, there, YouTube! I'm back again today for another game review, another special Kickstarter review. And today I'm very excited to be checking out the Siblings Trouble uh, from Pencil First Games LLC. This is for two to four players, ages eight plus, and it'll take you about 30 minutes to play. And in the Siblings Trouble, you will be taking control of a sibling going on an adventure. Where are you going on an adventure to? Well, each game is going to be different. One game you might be finding robots or rats or witches or goblins or seahorses or all sorts of crazy different things. You're going to be fighting these by storytelling with various different items going on, searches going down, paths, and having big secrets revealed. What am I talking about? Let's open it up see how it works. All right, then, so we're going to be taking a look at what you're going to get inside of the Siblings Trouble from Eduardo Baraf. So first and foremost, we have a handy-dandy rule booklet. It is 16 pages. I would imagine it's going to be double-sided, full color. Uh, it has pictures and examples and all sorts of good stuff. Uh, it is just this close to being an absolutely outstanding rule booklet. It does feel a little bit clink clunky the first time you play, but the gameplay itself is so simple that you'll be up and running in no time at all. Uh, also, I want to mention this is the promotional copy I have in front of me, so obviously I doubt your rule booklet is going to look like that. Uh, so, in this game, what you're going to be doing is you are going to be telling stories. You'll be telling stories at the draw of every card about your epic adventure that you are going to go on. And who are you? Well, you're not a pirate, you're not an alien, you're actually going to be some everyday average kids going on your typical adventure that kids would go on. Think the Goonies, think Super 8. You're just going to be going to the junkyard, or the waters, or the ancient forest, but you're kind of like in a magical land, because all sorts of crazy stuff can and will be happening to you, depending on how you twist your story. Uh, so let's go over the components, then I'll get into the gameplay. So first and foremost, we're going to have our four characters over here. Danger, Mayhem, Mischief, and Adventure. When you get a character, you're going to get their own custom die, which is going to have uh, a one, two, three, four, and five stars, or four, one, two, three, and four stars, excuse me, an epic fail symbol, which as you can guess is probably pretty bad, and then their own unique symbol, which is going to match their character, which means you're going to be able to utilize their special ability, which is on the back of the card. So let's take a look at Dangers. His special ability is that he's risky. He may take three stars, which is pretty good. I mean, you're, 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 the only thing you can get higher is a four star. Or you can take a plus one star over here, which are these tokens, which uh, obviously those are negative one. Those are plus one, they're double-sided. And re-roll your die. If you roll an epic fail, you must go home immediately. So that one's a little bit of a gamble. Now we'll get into home in a second, but needless to say, you don't want to go home. Nobody wants to go home when they're having an adventure. So you're going to have the four different characters. They all have their own unique special abilities. They're also going to get their own token. Everyone's going to get one of these tokens, and you'll be able to use this, uh, sorry, I'm missing a token right here, it's somewhere, uh, it's somewhere around here. You're going to be able to use these tokens once per game to unlock, to utilize your special ability. So, next you're going to get handy dandy reference cards, pretty self-explanatory, there's a lot of information on these. Uh, they are very, very helpful when you are first starting the game, just a heads up. So next, you're going to have various different kinds of treasure that you're going to bring on your adventure, or potentially find on your adventure. You have your normal treasure, and then you're going to have, I believe it's what's called epic treasure. So your normal treasure are going to be things that kids would normally take on an adventure. Handheld games, and chrome lug nuts, and rusty nails, and a, a gnarly looking stick, I like that one. A book safe, all sorts of different stuff that you can actually see kids taking on adventures. And what these are going to do, are these are going to make it easier to beat the bosses in the game, the monsters in the game. So this one, plus one additional star, if you describe your sibling's favorite kind of game in your story. So essentially, if you were battling like a giant rat, you could be like, you could say in the story like, oh, and then we came up to a giant rat that was going to eat us, and I rolled a three. Well, obviously I wouldn't say roll a three, uh, but then say, but then I told my sister, hey, it's just like that one giant rat game we used to play on the Sega Genesis, and then she got up her courage, and that would give plus one to your story, which would make defeating things easier, because those are items that are going to have in front of you. Now, there's also going to be what are called epic ones, which are going to be really, really good, and they're going to have, you know, very special abilities that will help you out a lot. So, for instance, a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, if stuck at home, you or another player may eat the sandwich to immediately return to the adventure. That's a really good one. And there's going to be a whole bunch of these that are still very kids' themes. Uh, they're going to be just absolutely game-changing when you finally do get a chance to utilize them. So you're going to have treasures on your adventure, random things you're going to be taking with you. So, the different adventures that you're going to go on, there's four included in the base game, are going to be Mystic Waters, Ancient Forest, Abandoned Junkyard, 
and Hillside Caves. Now, I have abandoned junkyards set up right here, and the cards are going to be set up in a very specific way. Uh, you have to set it up so there's paths and big secrets and all sorts of various different things. When you first set up the game, uh, it's going to be different every game, partially because you're going to be putting in different cards every game, and also because there's tons of extra cards that are included with the game. So I have the abandoned junkyard set up right here, and we have, what, like 10 extra cards left over that are different encounters that you might face each and every time you go on this particular adventure. And in fact, each one is e even going to have its own unique boss. There's going to be two bosses for each location you go to. So no adventure is going to be the same. And making it even more modular is the fact that there's tons of different paths because on your adventure you're going to encounter numerous different paths and these are going to be different paths that you are going to go on. So in this game, you're not just storytelling based on what the card says. You, you, if, if you're doing it optimally, you want to try and connect this card with this card, then connect both these cards to this card, and then connect this card to this card, and connect this card to the big secret which is going to come up. And in each and every adventure you take, there's going to be a big secret. When someone draws it, they're going to, uh, they're going to go ahead, they're going to look at this card, which might be you saw it in a dream, there's a letter in an attic collecting the bones, it fell from the sky, and then you're going to take a peek at the boss that you're going to have to battle so that way you can help prepare yourself for the upcoming battle with the boss. This one in particular is the Robot Overlord which definitely fits the Junkyard theme. He's got a 7 plus so you're going to need to roll at least 7 stars on this. Now luckily you're saying but the stars only go up to 4 on the dice. Well when you do uh, an adventure when you finally do get to the boss everyone is going to have a turn to add their stars to the thing but there's also what are called fear counters, and fear counters are going to come up a lot more than you would like them to, and that means you're going to add a little bit extra fear to the boss, and each boss is going to have a unique thing that the fear counters do to him. So, for instance, this robot overlord, overlord, for each fear counter, search the discard pile for a treasure and add that treasure's star rating to a robot overlord. So that means his star rating is going to go up exponentially. So if you have five fear counters on that sucker, that, that robot overlord is going to go from a 7 to like a 13, 14, 15, you know, something crazy high, which means you're really going to have to be working together in order to solve that. So, we went over the big secret, we went over the past, which are going to be various different things. Now, most of the time on the path, you're going to see a couple different symbols on there. They're either going to be having you roll for, there we go, either the black dice or the yellow dice. So, the black die are going to be the search die, and these mean various different things are going to happen. There's six sides on this die, which we'll go over right now. So, the first side of the die you're going to deal with is treasure. That's when you mean you get a backpack. This is pretty self-explanatory. That means you're going to draw a treasure card. That's obviously the one you want to see every time, pretty much. The next side you're going to get is what's called search. And there, is, there are always going to be directions on the cards of what you're supposed to do. So, if you, you, if you get the search, uh, this, for this one, you're going to pull something out of the slime. Draw a treasure card. Let's see, the stash of weapons. If you're going to draw a treasure card and remove one fear counter from the final boss, a lot of times these will be very good for you. Next, you're going to get this little path right here, which means you're going to draw a new path card from the unused path card deck and resolve it. That means you're going to be telling a new story about the differing path you're going to be going on. Most of the time, this is probably going to be bad for you, but sometimes it can definitely be good. Next, you're going to be having an encounter. The player encounters a new monster and must resolve the encounter. As you could probably guess, monsters are not normally good. A fellow traveler. This player comes across a fellow traveler who must be described. So you're going to be doing more storytelling. The player draws three treasure cards and places them on the table. Each player may trade one treasure card from their hand with the traveler. So essentially you're going to be able to, you know, if you're having a hard time telling stories about people in history or your, your brother's video game or something, this is going to let you kind of uh, trade out your treasure card. Last but not least is the one you don't want to see, and this is a fear. The player must add a fear counter to the final boss and describe why that boss is now more terrifying. So for instance, the robot overlord, you might have just found out that he smells like stinky cheese or something like that. Now the other kind of dice that you're going to have is right here and this is going to be the treasure dice and most of the time this is going to be good but there's definitely some bad on this one. So as you can see right there, add a fear counter. Never good. Never never good. Uh, next, you're going to be able to draw a treasure when you roll that one, so that one's great. This is the epic treasure symbol, which as I mentioned, they are up here and they're always really, really good and when they do finally get them into play, they're really going to help you out. Uh, this one's going to give you a negative one to your next roll, so that's not good. So essentially, if you rolled a five star, you would instantly take this into effect and you would have a four star. 
And then last but not least, you are going to get a plus one star. But most of the time when you search for treasure, good things are going to happen. So what you're going to be doing in this game, uh, you're going to be revealing the different cards. Uh, you're going to start off, you're going to have a treasure. And you're going to explain why you brought that treasure with you, why you brought your pocket knife or your action figure with you. And then you're going to start going on your adventure. So the first person would say why they're going to the abandoned junkyard. And then they'll run into the dark alcove. And that means you're going to have to deal with, you know, uh, one of these. You're going to have to search for stuff and then talk about what's happening. And then you're going to get to the cornucopia of treats. And you're going to roll this once again. And you're going to be talking about what's happening. You're going to be going in a circle. Then you'll get to the big secret. And there's a secret agent's secret. Yesterday you overheard government agents telling you about something strange with dealt with the robot overlord and whatever else is going on. And you're going to continue going through those cards until you get to the boss. At which point everyone is going to fight the boss together. If you were able to successfully fight the boss, then you will head to the journey home and you'll be the winners of the game. Now, one more thing I want to mention before we bow out is that sometimes you will be sent home. If you lose an encounter, there's a very good chance you're going to be going home. And if all players are sent home at one time, your adventure is over and you lose the game. But most of the time, that's not going to happen. But it definitely can happen. But that, in a nutshell, is how the siblings' trouble is played. Alrighty then, the siblings' trouble from Pencil First Games LLC. What are my final thoughts? Let's go over the pros, let's go over the cons. First on the con side, the game's not going to be for a lot of people. I would consider this a very niche game for a couple reasons. First and foremost, it's only two to four players, which means if you've got a big gaming group, it's not going to be for you. Also, I would recommend playing this with your gaming group because this is bar none a family game. You're going to be going on family-friendly adventures with child characters who are going to take along with them their treasures that they're, they're going to be getting are, are kids things they'll have you know uh comic books not you know comic books and like superhero dolls and you know pocket knives and shiny pennies and all sorts of stuff like that so it definitely is in the family genre uh the last big con that i have on this that's not going to be for a lot of people is that this is storytelling this is pure and simple storytelling every time you draw a card you are going to be telling a story. So if you don't like storytelling games, don't even think about this game. I mean, that, that's pretty, pretty obvious there. Um, one more kind I do have of this is that this game is pretty much all luck-based. I'm going to go out and say that there's nothing really skillful about this game at all, except for being able to weave together the various different elements of the story and keep them intact and use your special cards in front of you. But other than that, this is all completely luck-based. So, going over the cons, moving on to the pros, this is a niche game, but I like this kind of game. There's a couple different reasons why. Now, this game is not the easiest when you first try and understand it, because you think there's going to be more than there actually is. But once you know how to play, you can knock this game out in like 15, 20, 25 minutes. This is a very, very quick fast paced games once you know how to get once you get everything set and everybody knows how to play you're like all right we're doing this then we're doing that and i'm rolling the dice and this happened and that happened oh my gosh there was this and I, but luckily i brought this and then this happened oh save me help me roll this dice and do this and do that and then you're going to be flying through this game each time you play it it's going to get a little bit quicker most of the time uh, also this is definitely a fantastic family game this is one that i will gladly keep on my shelf if i get a copy of it because i think this is a perfect game for uh, for, for adults and their kids. I really do, especially if your kids are in the 6 to 10 age range. I think they're going to have an absolute blast sitting down at the table and weaving together this intricate, crazy story with mom and dad and the crazy Uncle Larry who's drunk sometimes, all that sort of stuff. It's going to be a lot of fun for families. And I'm always on the lookout for family games. This is one that I'm really excited for when my son gets older. The last pro I have about this game is I love how different every single game is going to be. There's tons of big secrets and there's tons of paths and there's tons of treasures and there's tons of cards and each game is going to be its own game. It's going to be its own unique journey that that you're going to remember with your kids for a while and it's going to be <laughs> it's like that time you remember that happened and this happened and that really is in my opinion what's great about this game when it comes to being a family game. So the siblings trouble, it's not going to be for a lot of people, but if you are on the lookout for a great family game, 
look no further. Check this one out. It's going to be on Kickstarter you very, very soon. I'll post the Kickstarter link below. Also, in the comments below, let me know, do you like storytelling games? I love storytelling games. Obviously, I made one myself, but I really do enjoy storytelling games. It just gives you that chance to be up on that stage and weave together your story. And one thing I did like about this game and in other games is you can kind of just make the story as crazy as you want, and then the next person, especially if you're taking the game kind of seriously, has to try and stretch that story into whatever card is played next and that's a lot of fun but let me know in the comments below do you like storytelling games my wife hates them i love them what do you think and as always if you enjoyed this content please be sure to click on the subscribe button and thanks for your time youtube that was the review for the siblings trouble for more reviews and previews check back at bowers game quarter